Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hip Senior Podcast Book Edition. We are back today with Tipa Snow and talking about her book and her daughter's books, Bad Words and Dementia. Tipa, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Marianne. It's good to be with y'all. It's great to have you back. Yeah. Okay, new book out, Bad Words and Dementia. Second one in the series. The first one was just getting to understand about dementia. And now we're talking about one of those symptoms that comes up when people are living with brain change, dementia, and they're frustrated, scared, angry, upset, lost, feeling trapped, feeling abandoned. Any emotional state or surprise can result in the use of words in places and spaces where they probably wouldn't have used them in front of the kids in a social situation. And they're doing it. Nice. So Amanda and Abby got together, wrote this, and it's inspired by you. And show us a little bit of the inside. How creative. So here's an example. Okay. So this is this little boy. There you go. There he is. He gets super excited. He likes to visit his grandma. And she's at the Great Shady Grove home. So she's living in residential care. And in this situation, he decided to sit on the chair that his mom said don't sit on the chair it's not meant for you and he sat on it anyway and so the chair got a leg broken and he knows his grandma is super good at fixing stuff he's always been good at fixing stuff so he decides you know what she'll be able to fix it and she he takes it to her and she's trying to do what she's been able to do before what do you think mary and what do you think's happening here yeah, there's some frustration going on, isn't there? Yeah. And she just suddenly, while she's trying to get it to stay where she wants it to stay, she goes, shh, shh, shh. Okay. And the kid's yeah. like, wait, bad word jar. He didn't think anything about it because he doesn't hear that word. Uh-huh. See, this is the tricky part. So this is the plot. And so then grandma says, the kid fix this shitty terror. And she just was like, well, then mom shows up okay and the little boy says hey mom can you help us fix this shitty chair oops <laughs> mom wait what now that oops is it so that's a typical oh but mom takes a second and goes wow i guess fixing the chair was harder than everybody thought huh yeah let's see Wow, this chair's giving us a hard time. You know what? How about if we try saying that naughty chair? <laughs> so it's called a substitution. Yeah. Yeah. And so on the way home, the little boy and mom talk a little bit about that word that grandma used. That's one that we don't use because it's not a good word. Sometimes grandma gets real frustrated. We're going to try the word naughty. Now, when you get big, and you're a grown up, you can do that word that grandma used. But for right now, so what do you think, Marianne, about this idea of the storyline, just the storyline of kids and helping kids? And really, what you'll see in the book, the word shit is not written out, but I'm here. We're, we're doing an R rated version here today. In the book, it just says, let me see if I can get to the page with it on it. Yep. The kind of thing that we have. So for kids, it's like kids know often have heard these words. Usually between the ages of two and seven, they hear their first word somewhere, overhear it, pick up on it, and they'll try it out. And usually a parent or a guardian will say, Ooh. but they don't necessarily have to deal with the relationship of having someone in their life that is living with dementia. Right. So right. it's Ugh. okay. So now we got two players and me. So the book is meant to help families deal with things that come up in real space about dementia. And then in the back of the book, and this would be for teens or for helpers, talks about left temporal lobe, right temporal lobe, and what's preserved and what's lost. And so it goes into a deeper explanation and has a bit more content for those who are trying to do the support to make sure that they have awareness, knowledge, and skill so that it makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that so much because kids often 
you're right. They often hear it. And a lot of times it's either school or home, right? Oh, yeah. Or on the street, walking down the street at the grocery Playground. store. Yeah. I was in, I was in a store in England, no, Australia. And these schoolboys came in and it was like, whoa, boy, do they have potty mouth. And I knew if their mother had been around, no way. But as an adult out of their visual field, they were doing their thing. Now I went over and stood next to them and suddenly they got super quiet. So those school, and those were junior high kids or middle school kids, they were real aware they weren't supposed to be doing it. So what are they practicing? Yeah, they think they look cool. They think they look Yeah, they're cool. practicing those forbidden words. Yeah. And they use them so much. It's, yeah. And you got to remember where you can use them and where you can't. And that's the tricky part about dementia is that they're not using them to be cool. They're using them because those words have power to reduce cortisol, to drop distress, that actually change your chemistry of your brain. That's why we have them, ultimately. That's interesting. Yeah, there's actually been studies on it. And there's pieces on NPR about it. Because we've got to stop thinking that they don't have purpose or value. They do. And if you use them episodically, when those stress moments come up, you'll find that your brain stays healthier because it's a release valve. It actually can drop your pain level. It can make your cortisol drop down. You can feel more in control again right after you do it. It's like a pressure valve. So if you're trying to lose weight, like I am, walking around your house cussing is going to help. Potentially for a short window. You got to be careful. Don't get carried away now. I live alone. My dog does, isn't going to care. It's all right. It's true. Tipo, thank you so much for being inspiration for this book. And please tell Amanda and Abby, thank you so much for putting book two out because I know that this is going to be incredibly useful for a lot of parents that are struggling of how do I, how do I deal with this? Right. Yeah. How do we do this? And the tricky part is we've got to get out of a mode of feeling like dementia is a horrible thing and I hate it. You can, but the person who's living with it is still present. And so you got to be careful because hating dementia when it's living inside a human being can start to feel like you hate the human being. And so we're figuring out what is it that's driving this and how do we deal with that? So next time, maybe rather than letting Timmy bring the chair with a broken leg to Nana or grandma without some support, might make sense. Hey, grandma, I have, I could use your help. We need to get this leg back on but more awareness that where grandma's abilities are. Right. Yeah. It's just a way of opening the door and exploring how can we make dementia be there, but we still focus on the person and don't get lost in the dementia. Okay. So the book is bad words and dementia, a positive approach to learning about dementia for kids. And it was only available on your website. It's a great resource thing. So, Tipa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, everybody.